Today I'm extremely excited, humbled, grateful and honoured to introduce you to a phenomenal guest that we have today. Not only was he the co-founder of Def Jam Records, not only was he the force behind the hip hop revolution, the founder of Tantris, a great studio in LA, Meditation Made Simple, and a business yogi. I'm joined by the one and only Russell Simmons. It's a pleasure and honor to have My you sir, in the studio. pleasure to see you. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. That's and, uh, some introduction. Yeah, well, it's thank true, you. it's Very true, sweet. it's thank true, you. and it's from the heart, it's thank from the you. heart. And I mean, you've got this move to LA, the yeah. studio's just opened us. Tell us up how it's going. Well, that's a long time dream of mine. Uh, I've been practicing yoga for over 20 years and, and I practiced in a very devotional space here in New York, the Jiva Mukti. And then I found when I moved to LA and, and even before that actually, I found I like practicing in the heat. And there were no devotional places. I, mean, I went to LA and I found a great studio, but I found that there was still no, te no yogic science being taught during the asana practice. And I thought it was a great idea to do something that was a devotional place, you know, that people could learn. Yoga is the science of happiness. And, and people to learn these life skills or these practices uh, more than just the asana or the physical practice. And so I kind of merged the two and try to make it fun. It just opens called Tantris. It's 9200 Sunset. And the idea is not for just I can go to a, a hot yoga place where they teach yogic science, but it's such a trendy space. It's like Soho House's entrance yeah. on 9200 Sunset. And so it's such a trendy place that it's like when I taught Oprah to meditate or Ellen DeGeneres, they taught a lot of people. It's a lot of big mouth people hang out at Soho House, <laughs> people with lots of reach. And so if we make yogic science as popular or just a little more popular, right, then we will be changing the vibration of the universe because the yogis, uh, they're more compassionate, aren't they? I mean, that's their goal, at least, to be. And I would guess that the collective the yogis uh, um, operate more from the inside, right, than they do from the world's uh, fluctuations and, and noise. And so these people, because of their, their, their quest to go inside, end up becoming the people who save the planet, who save the animals, who vote to help others, to give others the same... Uh, kind of opportunities and, and success that they achieve for themselves. So that's what yogis' commitments are. In fact, we open up with a chant in our practice, Loka Samasta Sukhi No Bhavantu, I'm sure you're familiar with. means may all beings everywhere be happy and free, and may my thoughts, words, and actions contribute. So that's a yogi's commitment to give other people and other animals and other species and even Mother Earth to something. It, it means to give all, um, everybody, what you want for yourself. And I think that that's kind of a, a, a mantra uh, for us as uh, practicing yogis. And the more people who practice the asana practice, the millions of people who practice yoga, if they got invested just a bit more in yogic science, then they would all move towards a more compassionate place. So that's why we built Tantris. It's long-winded, but you know, it's a passion project of mine. I'd love to see all American yogis just learn a little bit more about yogic science and kind of move towards a state of yoga. And that's, and that's why I did it. So that's my new project. That's incredible. It sounds phenomenal. I love the way you're going to the heart and the essence of the core of yoga mm -hmm. and allowing people to really access that. And I'm really hoping that all our viewers and people out there, anyone who's doing yoga, is going to take up Just that simple science. ideas. Yeah. The yoga Sutras is a science book for happiness. It is the Bible of yoga. No one knows how old, but certainly over 5,000 years, right? You say, and it's a simple book that promotes, and there's translations that are very simple in English. And, uh, one by Sachi Sadananda, I recommend. Yeah. So anyway, that's for me to give people that gift is a is a special thing. So that's what I'm doing. Now you were saying that you live, you know, you live your businesses, you work in your businesses in the same way you do with light, with integrity, with mindfulness as a yogi. Uh, well, it's a, you know, it's a temp. I'm a yogi, not a priest. I mean, I don't do everything right all yeah. the time, right? But you know, or, or I don't. I'm not. I don't feel. The, I feel like I've been learning always and evolving some. And I, I do less harmful stuff than I used to. Um, and that's just, you know, the practice, as we know, we're evolving. I mean, you've been a monk. I love your story. I mean, I don't have the courage to be a monk just yet. Um, you're, doing, you're doing a phenomenal amount more through business, which is phenomenal to hear. And it's great. Well, that's and I think very that's sweet of you to say. I think that your intentions are much greater than your, your actions, especially if your intentions turn into actions like the work that you did as a monk. But anyway, um, it's, you know, it's a fun trip to L.A. You know, moving to L.A. and doing what I'm doing is, is really exciting. You know, the, the film, we have lots of films in develop, development, lots of TV stuff. You know, we, we did a show for CISO last week, um, 
uh, great shows. Uh, that CISO is a new app on NBC. We have a new show on Spotify uh, called Rush Hour, where the artist gets in the in the car and makes a song on the way to a warehouse. He performs oh, it. Oh wow, incredible! And that's yeah. a special show. It's called Not. We changed it to Traffic Jams. That's called. Nice. And so there's a lot of TV and film projects in development and being made, and that's fun and exciting. You know, opening the yoga studio was. I can't even tell you how much fun that is. Yeah, who um, turned up and what was there and how, how was the energy on the opening night? No, the opening night was great. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a process. You know, uh, uh, the teachers, finding teachers who have studied in scripture as we want mm. is a challenge. Mm. You know, you told me your buddy was one of the teachers. What's her name? Kumi. Kumi, yeah, yeah. she's wonderful. She's on her way to India, though. Yeah. So, like, you know, a lot of the teachers who are really trained are always traveling and, and giving. But I think uh, I, my teacher training, a lot of the teachers who I ended up hiring probably couldn't pass it. But we'll you know, all go through the fire and all go through a process. This month, we have a theme, um, which is the second sutra. You must know that. Yes. You know the second sutra? Uh, it's um, the simplest of all the sutras. And, and it's, in a way, it explains what is yoga. But then that still is, it's about the, the cessation and fluctuation in the mind. Or when the mind is quiet and you see God in all things, right? So that's the state of yoga. Mm -hmm. So that's the first, uh, the first uh, theme for the month. And also, you know, like I told you, the intro and the, is uh, Moka Samastha, the commitment. And the outro is Umbudo Sri Satguru Bhagavan Ki, which is victory to the highest self. So it's just meant to bring enough spirituality. And for instance, we try to make it cool, though. It's not, it's not going to make you like preach to. Yes. Like we're using Krishna Das yes, from yes. Music Inspiration yes. and Kanye West. Yes. Right? So <laughs> it's going to be like next That's month is Bhagavan Das. Are you going to put them both on a stage? Are we going to see them perform? No, no, they're yeah. the inspirations. I mean, we okay. do have a Krishna Das concert coming. Sure. But no, just the, the teachers during class will be heavy on hip hop and soulful music and whatever music doesn't, you know, mess the nervous system up too much, along, along with devotional music. Amazing. So you are bringing that spin of keeping the hip hop tradition there. It's going to be fun, though. Yeah. I mean, we want it to be fun. Yes. Right? Yeah. And we, want to, we want to spread um, just an, in, an interest in, in yogic science to all the people who practice asana practice. Mm. Right, and I, so love that. I love that vision. We need to get it out to everyone and everyone needs to feel it's accessible, relevant, that's right. and that they can actually practice and demystify that whole process. Right. You know that I've written four books on yoga yes. and all of those books uh, are meant to be, and that's all as I can do. My daughter said that my last book was remedial at best. I thought that was good. She was 11 when she said it, a book before last. And, I, and, I, um, and that's as highbrow as daddy can write. So he, you know, <laughs> like the book about yoga, about the state of needing nothing or the state of presence that we've, grace we refer to, is called super rich, mm. right? And operating from that abundance is a kind of a, uh, a, a practice for, you know, achieving things in the world. But operating from an, a state of needing nothing is really attractive. Needing nothing attracts everything. So that was super rich. And so I find ways to give people these basic uh, tools that all the prophets talked about over and over in different languages and different times. They were different colors. They said the same things. Yogic science gives you those things as well, right? Even predating those prophets. So it's just simple and it's easy. And, and our yoga school should feel the same way. It should be fun. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. I went to yoga because there were so many hot chicks there. <laughs> I know you're a monk, but I went because. That's how you started. That's why I went. I know a lot of people who started that way. That's right. Yeah, and then they became monks. The ones that I know anyway. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of love for your love for animals. So love, love, love that he speaks on animals and all beings living free of suffering. So there's a lot of, I mean, that That's space. reminds me of my most recent series of tweets, yeah. my Twitter rant. Let's go for that. My yeah. Twitter rant was to, to Donald Trump, to the real Donald Trump. Yeah. And it was thanking him for taking the meeting with Al Gore and um, <clears throat> suggested to him that he could be the greatest president of all times. And it would be pretty easy for him to just be himself and be independent. And, and the, the examples, I mean, he's been, he's got surrounded by people who are not the kind of friends I know him to have, but, but that's okay. But you got to realize there are so many things that are so obviously wrong with our democracy, our flawed democracy, and Citizens United helped to promote those things even more, is the influence of business over our government. And here's a guy who's already rich. Wait, man, Bloomberg, I didn't support him in the beginning either. Mm -hmm. But he became my good friend. I support him two more times. I'd love to be able to support Trump next time. But we'd like to see him do something really simple, and I'm, everybody can think about this. First of all, the greatest cause of global warming on this planet is the cows. Mm -hmm. So instead of giving them $50 billion to underwrite the poisoning of our planet, destruction of our planet, I mean, it's all the water and the grain and the, the, the rainforests and, 
and all the stuff that goes into feeding cows, the oil, I mean, all the shit goes into cows. It's horrible. And then the growth hormones and the steroids and other, the grades cause the cancer. I don't know how much cancer we can afford. $300 billion in diabetes, billions and billions of dollars in cancer. That's from the animal product. So that sickness and sadness that comes from the 200 billion animals made to be born into suffering through factory practices from rape and everything else and stuffed with all kinds of carcinogens. That process, we should not underwrite that process, knowing that it's poisoning our children and destroying our planet. We should, in fact, tax beef like they do in Denmark. Tax beef and tax carbon. Every, be, remember Bernie Sanders talking about yeah, he wants everybody to school? Yeah, you treated him too, right? Yeah, so Bernie Sanders said he wanted to, but then he said you know, he liked his farmers. I don't know what farmers he's referring to, Bernie, because there are none. It's factory farms, and they're poisoning our planet and destroying our children. So when, when, he, when, he, when I asked him about that, which is the only thing I didn't understand, I loved his platform, except I didn't understand why he didn't say anything about that lobby, the factory farming lobby. I'm sure they don't like me much, and um, <laughs> I can't afford to do anything too wrong because they attack me immediately, but the factory farming industry is the most horrible threat to our country and the world there is. And then second to them, uh, it's carbon, right? These two things are destroying the planet. So tax them both and feed everybody and educate everybody and give health care to everybody. Because I don't know how much you can make taxing beef, all the, all the poison people eat, right? Have you had any response all the, or conversation with no, him? No, I just wrote those no. tweets yeah. a minute ago. I thought about how happy I was to hear that he, because he's the same guy mm -hmm. who once given some information or something that maybe not obvious to him. He said, you can get more with a hamburger. Oh, I didn't say hamburger. <laughs> Probably could, but more with a sandwich, I think he said, and a, and a bottle of water than you could with waterboarding, mm -hmm. right? And so now he's not for waterboarding, right? Mm -hmm. And it's one good meeting. But so Al Gore, I hope he did his job. Yes, took a meeting with him yesterday, uh, and I'm hopeful that that meeting was helpful to let him know that if 99 out of 100 people say there is a global warming that man makes. Don't choose the one guy. I would hope that the one guy, the scientist he did choose, who's in the pocket of those businesses, mm -hmm. who, uh, who said there's no man-made global warming, that that's, we don't need him to be ahead of the environment since our children will die when the planet dies. Mm -hmm. So we need to save the planet and not poison our children. It's simple. Yeah. Tax them. It's just tax. You know, if, they wanna, if you want to eat a hamburger, pay a tax. You take up 500 times more place on, on planet Earth than I do by eating your hamburger, 500 times. The statistics are crazy. Right, it's a huge and that's scale. the fact. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact that if you want to take up 500 times more place, more space on this planet than me, pay a tax because we're trying to save the planet here. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I think so that's a really interesting. That's just a, point. If I, as an independent president, if Donald Trump looked at the statistics and the truth, which is told by every scientist across the country and the world, we all know, say, well, why don't we fix this? Mm. I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be the best president ever, I'm gonna fix this. I'm gonna save the planet, I'm gonna educate the children. And then move on to the next subject, and the next. There's agreement between Republicans and Democrats on mass incarceration. Educating people in criminal behavior because of little bits of drugs and then dumping them back in communities without education or opportunity is destroyed the fabric of many communities. Let's fix that. Mm -hmm. There's lots of things he can fix, and he's capable. Common sense go guy who could fix those things. Then he would be a hero. That's, uh, the, that's the thing. In your prayer that you wrote to him three weeks ago, roughly, in that you're really talking about how he needs to start surrounding himself with the right circle, the right types of people, and you're worried that he may have alienated some of those in New York. But they should make friends with places. him. They, you know, make friends with him because he's the president-elect, and God knows he's a lot more independent mm -hmm. than Mike Pence, who I think has got his ideas fixed in stone. Some of those ideas uh, are hurtful to the masses, and, and I think, and I think that if Donald Trump you know, looks at him from his you know, own perspective and is not too heavily influenced by some of the people surrounding him, that he's chosen some too, mm -hmm. then he'll be you know, then he'll be good. You know, he can be good. I mean, I know it's you know, a stretch. And, uh, of course, not good. I mean, we're going to march and march and keep protesting. And just like we won 
in Standing Rock, a mm -hmm. really good yes. piece of justice for a short time, hopefully for a long time. Um, I mean, you can't. You can put, can you twist out the water in Beverly Hills like they did in Flint, Michigan? Yeah. The governor be in jail, right? Mm -hmm. If what happened in Flint, Michigan, the environmental racism that exists in this country, if, if, if it happened in Beverly Hills and someone didn't tell people for a day, they'd be in jail. <laughs> Never mind years of poisoning people and constantly report and poisoning them today. You know, and, and if I had any beef with President Obama, who did an amazing job, Drinking the water on TV, you don't give your kids that water. I'm not giving Ming Lee that water. So I don't care what filter they have, it, that perception that you can drink that water, you know, uh, is, is, it was not something we wanted to promote to the world. Mm -hmm. So that bothered mm -hmm. me. I know people got mad when I said it, but, you know, I'm critical of the Democrats because they're the ones underwriting, for instance, they're underwriting the, the poison that um, we're talking about now. They give $50 billion to the manufacturing of the animals that I talked about to poison our children yeah. and our planet. And they, God knows how many other lobbies have gotten to them as they have the Republican Party. So this is why an independent president can make a break. It doesn't have to be a genius to make a break from the, uh, uh, the obvious mistakes that are being made because of business influence. And to be a real president. Michael Bloomberg, I didn't support him. But I supported him in the second and third term, which was something that people questioned whether he should have a third term. Uh, because he was an independent. I didn't like a lot of what he did, but I liked his independence because he got things done, things I didn't know if were going to be good or not, that turned out good for New York because he was independent and honestly uh, was not influenced by business or money or people's uh, neediness. He just did what he thought was right, mm -hmm. and he was a really good mayor because of it mm -hmm. uh, in many ways. He cleaned out Occupy Wall Street. Oh. Definitely. Yeah, I almost <laughs> that wasn't good. I almost went to jail that day, but... <laughs> but I, you know, but I still get that an independent spirit is much greater in the White House. Maybe you could actually make some work happen. How are you managing to be disruptive? Like you keep saying, you know, there's been so many times when you're being disruptive, but you have some hope that Trump, where's that positivity coming from? You ain't got where, none, what the fuck else can yeah. you be? You got your choice. You ain't got no choice <laughs> to do what is, you know, it, it's in front of you. I went yeah. to sleep that night. Everybody's freaked out. I was like, whatever. It's what it is. And you're doing. I campaigned so hard against him. I mean, I, yeah. obviously, my 30-year friendship him, with him was a lot less valuable than the president's, than who was going to be the president. So I, you know, I campaigned so hard against him. Yeah. And now I just like to work for him and give him some direction or support or to do things that are helpful because that's all on one side I can do. Aside from being part of the protests, mm -hmm. that will be many. I can see that there are many things that will come up. You know, uh, I don't know if he knows what Planned Parenthood is. They say we want to dismantle it, but mm -hmm. it's health care. Two percent of it's abortion. You can, if you want to kill something uh, that has to do with abortion, okay, I, I get maybe you don't want to fund those two percent of their budget, which is abortion. The rest of it is HIV screening and cancer and helping underserved communities. So you don't want to destroy Planned Parenthood. You don't want to uh, kill Obamacare. You want to refine it. Mm -hmm. You can rename it if you want, but refine it. Don't kill it. People need health care. So there are things that are on his agenda for 100 days that we will have to fight. And those have worried a lot of people. The those, Supreme Court you know, people, he'll be uh, looking to a point. We hope that he'll be more moderate in his approach. I don't know what his experience has been. I know that you know, he sure dated like I did. I'm not know. sure it's adding up. I'm not sure it's clear. Yeah, I'm not I'm sure, sure that he clear. would want to uh, and to say that you know, uh, people who are underserved communities that have to go somewhere they can't get to to have an abortion, even that is horrible. You know, we yeah. want equal justice and equal opportunity as much as we can make it equal. Yeah. Um, that should be his job, too. I hope he'll, he'll do that and understand that. And a really important Women part Women should have a choice, yes. you know, of what to do with their body, a reproductive justice of some sort. And I think that uh, it's... So we have to protect those rights for women. Yeah, for sure. And, that, and that's where I'm coming to is how do you, you know, you talk about the incidents in your prayer as well. You talk about incidents happening across the country in the name of Trump. There was just something at Grand Central Terminal the other day. There was a peaceful protest of not in our city. There was, you know, an Islamic girl whose hijab had been taken off and she'd run into Grand Central Terminal to be protected. She said that they'd said Trump before they did that. People are seeing these incidents come up and you, you talk about them quite strongly. And that's where I'm trying to understand that balance between the well, challenge. Well, I'm the chairman of the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding, and we go all over the world, um, you know, putting imams and rabbis together and working to have, um, because, it, you know, they're both children of Abraham. Their rap is the same. 
they find them when they're in a the room, they love each other. You know, even in Israel, we've had these programs. Mm -hmm. They've been successful. And, you know, we all know that all the prophets said the same things and promote the same ideas. And so when you put them in the same room, it works really good. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, the Islamophobia has got to be the worst phobia we have in this country. Mm -hmm. And that, the abuse of Muslims, we have a program right now, in fact, that's running called um, Muslims Are Speaking Out, because this idea that Muslims are not helping us or in the war against those extremists is, is insane because, you know, 97% of the people killed by ISIS are Muslim, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it doesn't make sense to think that the 99%, 99 point whatever percent, 9% of the Muslims who are not radicalized should be, you know, should be demonized, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Americans don't know that, so that's why we promote this idea about Muslims and their peaceful work to fight terrorism. Um, it, it, and it seems like, you know, if we wanted to stop terrorism, we'd promote a little more love towards such a loving community, and then that community would already, uh, already does everything they can possibly do, but that community will spread its, its message of love to those who may be suffering from lack of opportunity, education, or even angry over the discrimination that they receive in this country for having the name Muhammad or whatever their name. So mm -hmm. we just need to spread what is good in Islam, which is, again, 99.9% .9 of people. They might not be 99.9% mm -hmm. .9 are good. 99.9% .9 are not uh, radicalized. And that's, you know, that's statistic. I think I read yeah. that here. So, yeah. so I think that's an important thing that he, he can do is to try to say that he's not the leader of hate in any way whatsoever. I know he said it, but more convincingly, mm -hmm. you know. And, and I mean, you were talking about your younger daughter just earlier as well. How were you explaining this whole scenario to them? I know there's been a lot of challenges, parents saying, I'm not sure how to talk to my children. I'm not sure to, how to talk to them and their friends. How, how did you do that? My daughters are so well-read and smart mm -hmm. and thoughtful mm -hmm. that they have to explain it to me. So I don't really have to, my daughter, wrote a beautiful piece on Donald, which is much more interesting than the one I wrote that you, that you read and that was spread around so much. So they, they really explained to me what it is. What have they been saying? That wisdom well, would be really useful to... Well, Yoki, just, you know, she's known Donald, met him over the years. She's just disappointed in the position that he... You know, to win an election, a lot of people have compromised themselves and aligned themselves with people who are not necessarily... Um, inspiring characters, you know, just to get their constituency. I would argue that the constituency that the far right, alt right has is so small that it wasn't worth uh, protecting. But he's in office now. Let's hope that we can turn him around and, and get him involved in um, helping underserved communities, which is what he said he wanted to do, helping African Americans, which is what he said he wanted to do, and then forget the, the African Americans, the minorities, the, the uh, um, which almost half this country is, forget just that, just all America, mm -hmm. leadership for all America, and to make choices that'll be helpful to them and, and uh, not favor business so heavily that it, it poisons them. Mm -hmm. And the part of you that believes him or is with him, is that because of your friendship of 30 years? Or no, it's it my, just... my belief in humanity right, okay. um, in general. Mm -hmm. And I think that it doesn't matter if I, my belief in him is a belief that anything is possible yeah. as much as yeah. anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like the choices he's made. I don't like a guy who's, you know, known to be a racist being, you know, selected. I don't like a guy who doesn't believe in it, in man-made, um, uh, that doesn't believe in man-made um, mm -hmm. um, um, environmental mm -hmm. destruction. Um, I don't believe in that. I mean, that's crazy. No, 99% of people don't believe in that. So obviously he's made choices that have proven us that he is going in the wrong direction. But I think meetings and support and push from us and push back from us. I didn't say don't push back. No, you're, I didn't say don't take clear. to the streets. Yeah, I didn't say watching. don't protest. I didn't say don't use your voice mm -hmm. uh, uh, disapproval for things that are hurtful to humanity. Mm -hmm. I said there's a push and pull. Mm -hmm. you know, you got, so somebody's got to be there to pull. Yeah. And I, but I, we certainly should push back, all of us. You know, we should protect what, what we love about this country and the Constitution first and everything else mm -hmm. that, that's being threatened by the, the and it, it's a constant threat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, refining Obamacare is a good idea. Make it better, make it cheaper. But don't get rid of it. Don't get rid of it. Or, you know, protecting Planned Parenthood, something I just yesterday was, was talking about, and of course, saving the planet, of course. You know, 
uh, ending mass incarceration, the further militarization of our police against communities of color. Of course, you know, um, getting the attorney generals to look into these cases when, when the local DAs don't. And like in New York State, we have a, a special law that we imposed just now uh, through an executive order about police brutality. But we need to have access to the GoPros when you talk about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, localized police issues. And we need a, a, a president who understands why we should see the footage from GoPros. And everybody should have a GoPro. Yeah. The, uh, the president um, promoted that he would underwrite or support GoPros in the cities from federal funds. Of course, we want to, we want to see what police are doing. Police should want to be seen mm -hmm. in what they're doing. And it should be transparency. So there's a lot of things we want. Um, and yeah, uh, a more and compassionate uh, campaign and another uh, candidate uh, in office would have been more desirable for us as a starting point. But we have what we have. have. That's, what, that's my point. We have yeah. what we have. Yeah, and we start from there. Yeah. And we start from there. And do you think there's, this is an activation point for the younger generations? Do you think this is a time where they can wake up, rise up, they need to stand up for what they believe in and respond from what you've seen in your life and all the wisdom that you've seen? Is that what you expect if, from them? If what anything you, that uh, will, good will come from our current political crime, climate, it'll be that compassionate people stand up and, and loving people stand up for those values that they care most about mm -hmm. because they know they're under threat. And so maybe uh, the good that comes from this, you know, I think the, the way this happened is um, a lot of, one of the ways that this happened, aside from, you know, people struggling and the poor getting poorer while the rich continue to get richer, even in the same, even in the democratic rule on, you know, from the first two years until the next six years of, you know, just bickering and nothing happening. They see that no one has done anything for underserved communities. And so the people who voted for Obama, many of them voted for Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. They want change and they want an equal system. And, the, and, and it's this equality they're fighting for is, is one that we should all be fighting for, for them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that's, that's, I think, the core of what we all want, right, is to give everybody the same uh, opportunities and, and, and love and respect that we get for ourselves or that we, that we ask for for ourselves to give that to, give that to, to others, of course, others. right? Yeah, definitely. And we've got another question flying through here as well. Did you ever talk with Donald Trump in your friendship about meditation and yoga? Did you ever have those discussions? And if you had a meditation for him today, what would it be? Well, I don't. Uh, I do do guided meditations. Yes. I just do mantra based. So the idea laying the mind settle. You meditate. You don't ask for anything. When you pray, you ask for something. But meditation is like to listen mm -hmm. more than to ask. So to sit and listen for inner guidance for anyone, and for Donald also because inside is etched inside you is what's good for humanity and for you. On the outside is the noise that separates you from that beauty. So the idea, the, the journey inside for any leader is very important because then you can make decisions uh, not so heavily influenced by the world but more influenced by God or the higher self. Russell, is there anything that we haven't covered today that's really on your mind, that's really in your heart that you want to share with the audience? As much as I'm hopeful about our current president-elect being an independent and doing things to help the people is, how, is, is equally, uh, I'm equally as hopeful that we will stand up for what we believe in, that we don't allow our values and our uh, belief system to get crushed um, for a, a more angry, less compassionate, and selfish uh, um, America. We want a, a more compassionate, loving, and caring and sharing America. And so we have to fight for that. As much as we you know, want to hope for and pray for better, we have to fight for good and better. Thank you Thank so you. much. It was a I great mean, those, pleasure. Those messages are universal. They're accessible. I think there's something that can really help us in reflection rise up. And I really feel that you're doing that. Like when you say you want to give advice as a yogi, you're saying you're giving advice with non-judgment. You're saying you want to work with. I think those are really mature concepts. And I think for a while they've been challenging for a lot of people. But I think they're a good challenge in helping people rise up. I hope so. And I hope so thank too. You. But thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you again later on. Thank you so much for tuning with us. Massive thank you to Russell. Thank you, thank you Great again. Great to see you, sir.